Hello and welcome along. My name is Azavar or Azza, and in this video we're going to take a look at the story of Hurdy and Gurdy in Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered. Now Hurdy and Gurdy look very similar and we are told that they are brothers. However, pay close attention to these cutscenes and the dialogue within them as we dive deeper into the backstory of Hurdy and Gurdy. I'd just like to point out that in this video there's going to be some story spoilers. Greetings, my good friend. I hope all is well with you. What? I look like a preacher, do I? I suppose this outfit fools people quite well. It's me, Gurdy. These are my brother's clothes. Enough already. Now, now. Don't get so angry. It's bad for your beautiful complexion. First you claim a phantom city is hidden deep within a volcanic cavern, protected by a great crystal. Then you claim a fountain of myrrh flows on an island paradise across the sea. Yes, it sounds like a dream, does it not? Dream on your own time! I've had enough of your tales. We part ways here. <laughs> no, don't leave me behind. Don't believe a word he says! Now that was uncalled for. What about all our adventures together? My name is Gurdy. I doubt we'll meet again, but let me walk with you until another caravan comes by. Let's take a quick look at Hurdy, who is the brother who wears the white coloured clothes. There's a random chance that you can find Hurdy preaching in towns, apart from Tifa. He talks about how memories are important, how memories should be preserved, and how he wishes for a world without miasma. With the passage of time, some memories fade, and others are idealized. They say that somewhere out there, those lost memories become drops of mud. We have seen countless wars between our tribes, empty struggles for no end. But we can learn from these mistakes and apply that knowledge toward the future. The long journeys to collect myrrh are a trial that we must endure. I hope, though, that our bright young travelers will someday be free of this burden. I believe that we should cherish memories throughout our lives. Think about it. Consider how empty our lives would be if we could remember nothing. Memories are beautiful indeed. More on Hurdy a little bit later. Let's get back to the story of Gurdy. It's me, Gurdy. These are my brother's clothes. Oh, I never told you. I have an older brother. Some mornings, I wake and see these clothes hanging there. <laughs> Unlike me, my brother is kind and sincere. He tried to do something amazing. What do you think it was? He tried to rid the world of all miasma. An extraordinary goal, don't you think? But quite a difficult one. I heard that he came very close to uncovering the truth. Actually, I have no memory of anything besides my brother. Memories of him are the only things within me that are true. I can't stand the emptiness, so I make up lies to cover it all. But if the things I say turn out to be true, then they're likely memories I've forgotten. Oh, it looks like they're leaving. Take care. May we meet again. The meteor light great shadow. Yes, where is it? Who are you? Ryan? You cannot defeat Ryan. You are not yet ready. Your memories are not enough. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. Three rocks, the winter's kiss await. One by one, they find their mate. Uh, I forgot to tell you. I've never met my brother. If you ever run into him, kindly let me know. 
This cutscene here is really important because it actually shows us Hurdy stood next to the Black Knight in what would appear to be these two battling against Ryum. Ryum is an evil monster that feasts on people's memories. Here, the game is trying to show you that the memories between Hurdy and Gertie might not be so separate after all. The meteor light great shadow. Where is it? Who are you? Ryum? You cannot defeat Ryum. As you play through the game, you can also get dialogue from Roland, the village elder of Teeper, who mentions a scholar from Teeper who hired a black knight for protection on his journey to rid the world of miasma. Roland mentions that this scholar disappears after sending one final letter from a place called Magmel. Now, Magmel is a town just next to a place called Mount Valenge. Mount Valenge is the final stage of the game where you would go to fight Ryum. Also, the only way that you can access Magmel and Mount Valenge is by getting the unknown element on your chalice, which is unlocked from Lenari Desert. So, Gertie gives you all of these pieces of this poem in order to help you unlock the unknown element from Lenari Desert to then be able to cross the Miasma Stream to be able to access Mount Valenge in order to fight the Meteor Parasite and in turn free the world of Miasma. Now, the Meteor Parasite is the thing that is actually producing the Miasma and Hurdy, being a scholar, has seemed to have worked out where the Miasma is coming from or what is producing the Miasma. So this is why Hurdy wants to go here. Whilst Hurdy and the Black Knight are battling the Meteor Parasite, they seem to be interrupted by Ryum, and this is why we see them in that memory whilst they're battling Ryum from earlier on. You are not yet ready. Your memories are not enough. However, if we put two and two together, there's actually a sentence here where Gertie says, Some mornings I wake and see these clothes hanging there. There's also a sentence where he says he's actually never met his brother. So these poems that are being told by Gertie to help you out are actually the memories of Hurdy, who Gurdy actually was before he lost his memories to Ryum. Also, before the final battle of the game, you're told that Hurdy has made it there before with somebody named Leon. I remember when Leon and Hurdy came here. Ryum robbed them of their memories. And I could do nothing but watch. After seizing their memories, Ryan seems somehow dissatisfied. We know that Leon is the Black Knight who's the hired bodyguard for Hurdy. I can't remember what I loved or what I hated. I remember nothing at all. But someday, I will reclaim my memories from that light. So, don't look at me that way. It isn't over yet. I'm not completely hollow. So, if we break all that information down, Hurdy, who is the scholar from Tipa, hired the Black Knight Leon to go and face the Meteor Parasite over at Mount Valenge. They obtained the unknown element from Lenari Desert in order to be able to pass through the Miasma Stream just before Mount Valenge. They then went to face the Meteor Parasite in order to save the world from Miasma. The battle was then interrupted by Ryum, causing them to lose as he devoured all of their memories. So the point in the game where we meet Hurdy, he's actually already lost his memories and he believes himself to be Gertie, the brother of Hurdy. It turns out that they aren't brothers at all, it's actually the same person who's just lost his memory. It turns out that these pieces of this poem that are being told to you by Gertie are actually the memories of Hurdy trying to help you and your caravan get the unknown element in order to face the meteor parasite in order to save the world from miasma. Hurdy is trying to help you with what little memory he has left. Also, because we see Hurdy preaching in certain towns, it would suggest he has some kind of split personality since his battle with Ryum, or his memories are coming back and then going again. I feel like some of these cutscenes with Gurdy are actually influenced by the faint memories of Hurdy. For example, when the caravan of Liltis actually abandon and walk away from Gurdy. He says, now that was uncalled for, what about all of our adventures together? 
If we take a look at that, we know that Herdy used to travel with the hired Black Knight who actually was a Lilty. So he might be getting his memories crossed here with these Lilties. Also, if we take a look at the cutscene where Gertie is selling a loaf of Bannock to the Ukes and calling it a world model, he's actually trying to sell it for 10,000 gil. So somewhere in his memory, he believes this is really important. That's right. This world model can be yours for a mere 10,000 gil. Hmm. It seems our current funds come up a little short. And later on down the line, if you encounter the Ukes after they've purchased this loaf of Bannock, mold has begun to grow on the Bannock. And with the Ukes wisdom, they compare this mold to miasma. When Amadadi likened to mold to miasma, how did you react? So they do actually end up gaining knowledge from this Bannock and comparing it to the world and the miasma spreading throughout the world, just like the mold is spreading throughout this bread. So maybe Gurdy is not so much of a swindler after all, he's just getting his memories mixed up. The game only gives us subtle clues about this, so some of this is up for interpretation. So feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hmm, that's too bad. I do wish I could have it. Tell me, how much do you have now? About 5,000 gil. Why? Oh, very well. You are my favorite professor, after all. It shall be yours for 5,000 gil. I do not think we've met before, but I will gladly take it for 5,000 gil. Uh, you got quite a deal today, professor. First you claim a phantom city is hidden deep within a volcanic cavern, protected by a great crystal. Pretty interesting and mind-blowing stuff. I really enjoy this story of Herdy and Gertie. I've also got a video on the Black Knight story. These two stories are kind of similar and kind of interlinked, so make sure to check out the Black Knight story as well. I will reclaim my memories from that light. What did you think to the story of Herdy and Gertie? Let me know in the comments section down below. Bonus question time. What is the name of the Uke that is interested in buying the Bannock from Gertie? Let me know your answer in the comments. Since you're here, I'm assuming that you might enjoy video games. Well, as it happens, I also enjoy video games and so does the Azovar Army. Feel free to come and hang out during one of our live streams over on Twitch TV. We've also got an Azovar Army Discord. Links to those are down below, so hopefully see you there. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, feel free to give the video a like. If you enjoy the content on the channel, feel free to subscribe. If you know someone that might enjoy this video, you could share it with them. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care. Oh my good friend.